G'day there, mate. Welcome to Rishcraft. And today I made a Link vs. Phantom Ganon diorama from The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Starting off, we're going to pull out our Switch and see how many hours I've got in the game. 50 already. I got this game pretty recently, so that's quite a lot. I can't put it down. So first we gotta go find the Gloomheads down in the Linda's Brow Shrine directly below the Skyview Tower. We make our way there and find the Gloomheads. Starting off we're gonna get some red cosplay and some black cosplay because it's super flexible and I tend to stack my creations quite, quite, very easily. So we're going to start off by making this little flat base and we're going to wrap it in the gloom clay. In the old game it was malice, this game it's gloom. They all look the same, but I'm going to call it by the correct name. So we can go ahead and bulk up the first arm and start making the hands, cutting it into four fingers plus a thumb and we can go ahead and make those fingers. Now I think that while I was making these gloom hands, they are going to bring a spooky elegance to the scene. They're like the fancy art critics of Hyrule. They always are reaching for something deeper, especially in my Lynx hearts. So now that our gloom hands are starting to be developed, we can go ahead and stick on some extra bones for the arms, the hand, and an elongated hand which is going to be reaching out towards our tiny little link later and we can go ahead and make the final one which is an eyeball and hit everything with some isopropyl alcohol because if i'm not wrong i think it's quite criminal how this turned out and i don't want to be caught by the police for making such a nice diorama with my ego satisfied and you guys shaking your heads we can go ahead and start killing these gloom hands and find out what follows spoiler alert it's a form of ganon now, uh, as I move on, I'm sure all of you guys know who I take inspiration from, and um, not to name any names here, but I saw his first video making Calamity Ganon, and I fell in love with this channel. I think this was about two and a half years ago, and since then, my development in making dioramas such as these has skyrocketed from what it once used to be. So huge thanks to North of the Border for inspiring me and helping me get to the level that I am at now, and hopefully further beyond. And I have no intention of trying to copy his type of content. And I just thought that I loved this game. I loved his Zelda series, but it's completely unrelated. I loved Breath of the Wild. And I just wanted to make something from a game which I love. So please don't come at me in the comments. Or do, it really helps the algorithm. So um, either way, hate me, don't hate me. Just make sure you leave a comment. YouTube loves it. So now with that little rant out of the way, we can go ahead and bulk up our Phantom Ganon. Not really, he's quite skinny, he's mostly just bones, but defining all of the muscles. Then we can go ahead and add his ribcage on the outside, because his skeleton goes on the inside, but then he's got an extra ribcage, so he's quite an interesting being. Um, and he's quite dangerous too with his gloom sword, base damage of 41. However, it does damage Link when he uses it, which is quite, quite sad, as it has the same effect as the gloom hands. That makes me a very, very sad person, because when I first started off the game, I was like, cool, this, uh, this sword does 41 damage. I'm going to destroy everything. Little did I realize that I can't even use it. So now we can go ahead and make his little bracelets or bangles. I'm not quite sure his ethnicity. He comes from Gerudo Town and they love their jewelry over there. Of course, him being the only man born in the past 100 years. I'm sure he got everything specially made for himself. With both his legs bulked up and sort of defined, we can go ahead and make the head. So this head looks quite good, I might say, but Link's head, not so much. Link's head looks more like a five-year-old, got an action figure, accidentally stepped on it, then tried to sculpt the face all over again. So we can go ahead and define all the facial features with the eyes, the nose, and his weird crinkled mouth and stick it on to his neck stem and we can hit it with the heat gun to cure it before making his little 
roads, his tatters that go around his waist and we can make sure that these are wrinkled and torn and we can wrap them around his waist. Then we'll tie it up with an extra bit of these rags and we can go ahead and start tweezing them with my pliers to get that real torn edge. So looking forward to my next creation. It is going to be Formula 1 related. It's going to release hopefully on the weekend that Drive to Survive releases sometime that week. And um, look forward to that because I'm quite excited to what it's going to be. I've not started yet, but I do know exactly what it's going to look like. So now we can go ahead and move on to the hair. Just getting all the texture in with this little sculpting tool. And we can go ahead and make this strands of hair because he's got good hair genetics. So he's got lovely luscious red locks. He could be Goldilocks and the three bears, except it's Goldilocks and the five gloom hands. So now that he's eating his porridge, he's nice and healthy. We've given him his eyes and we can go ahead and give him his secret stone. Poor King Rairu subjected to staying on Link's right arm to watch him absolutely tear apart his kingdom and lift it up into the sky Ten, tens of thousands of years later. It's going to say 10,000 years, but that was the great calamity. I do know a bit of the Zelda lore. I've been watching a lot of the videos while I was making this creation. And I am really enjoying just getting to know the whole of Hyrule. I want to make Hyrule Castle. I want to make the King Gleok. I want to make some Lynels. I want to make a lot of things from this game. So please let me know if you liked this video and the diorama itself. And so whether I should make more. Too bad. I don't really care what you say. I just want to know if you want to see it or not. But I'm going to make it anyways. So we can go ahead and make his hands and add the Gloom Sword on in a second. And that's our Phantom Ganon done. Now moving on to our Hyrulean hero, we can kill Phantom Ganon. Now that my ego is absolutely thriving with a perfect battle with Phantom Ganon with all the flurry rushes and taking zero damage, we make our way to Hyrule Castle. And this place has been torn up by the upheaval and we are going to use all the armor found within it. Being the Royal Guards uniform, it is my absolute favorite uniform out of the entire uniform sets in all of The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Obviously there is the classic champion's tunic, but in my personal opinion the Royal Guards armor just looks the absolute best. So starting with some armature wire, we can get to his underrobes being the red clay and we can go ahead and add his black pants followed by the white wrapping for his boots that will come later on as well as the little flaps coming from underneath his boots. So with that done, we are done with most of the legs and we can go ahead and make the arms doing the same treatment because he's got the white gloves on top as well. I love the way all these colors contrast with one another. Just finishing up adding all of the blue sections to his uniform then we can get started on the head. So obviously this link is not the best looking and uh, I think it could have been heaps better but let me know down in the comments if you hate it or if you love it and whether I should quit sculpting in general. So adding in his head we can go ahead and start making the nose and all his facial features using our ball stylus to get the eye shape and making his mouth before adding his pointy elf like ears for our Hyrulean hero. So go on his cap and adding his eyes in before adding in his gorgeous and iconic locks. Because just like Ganon, he eats his porridge too and instead of the five gloom hands, it can be Goldilocks and the six sages. Speaking of the sages, I wanted to know if I were to make another Tears of the Kingdom diorama, or I guess in this case it would be Breath of the Wild, whether I should make the champions, the four champions, all in one diorama. 
So speaking of the first game, we come to the Sanctum in the Royal Throne Room where we can find all the Royal Guards weapons which are all decayed and we can get these, the Claymore, the Spear, the Sword and the Shield. So moving on to the weapons. Now let's not forget about Link's sword, the Royal Guards sword. It's a blade fit for the hero in full Royal Guards gear. I guess when you're saving the kingdom, it's important to look sharp. Talk about cutting edge fashion. So with that pun out of the way, let's get making onto his hilt. And I absolutely love the black and red look of the sword, which is why I went for the Royal Guards sword and shield. So now we can get painting all the details with some greys on the shield and sword before covering all of the colored clay with the reds and the blues and the yellows and literally every color that must be painted on but i really think that sculpting with the colored clay here not only helped my dumb little brain process what colors go where but also any of the hard to reach places i can miss them and it's totally fine because it's the same sort of color so adding the grey for his ribcage before giving the gold trim to Link and painting on the Triforce symbol above that. So now that our little Hyrulean hero is looking a bit better, we can go ahead and add all the details onto the Royal Guard shield. I love how almost everything but Link's face turned out in this. So we can start adding on the eyes and painting on the pupils as well as the mouth section over here and paint on the same Triforce symbol that was painted onto his tunic just before. So with all the armor pieces and swords and everything out the way, we can take a look at our Link. He is now done and we can go ahead and add the final features to him, which is the arrow pouch filled with zero arrows because he just took out the Phantom Ganon and the Gloom Hands using his arrows as you can see in my gameplay before wrapping his little sash over which is where his sh sword sheath will go almost said sword sheath um, and then we can go ahead and add all his energy wells obviously at this point he has none I'm not sure why they're all black and empty but I just thought it was a nice touch to add these and I wasn't bothered to make the Pura pad so don't come after me in the comments I did what's just easier adding on his hand for his shield and doing the same for his sword adding a little thumb here and then we can go ahead and attach that on to his wrist uh, it does snap off so I use some super glue and here you can see adding his right ha hand with the Raru's black arm on to the little hilt of the sword before covering our entire phantom Ganon with some red and brown wash and painting on the black details of the gloom hands and adding the yellow pupil on the inside. And that's all the painting out of the way, we can start moving on to the base. So using some foam board as I'm running low on some XPS foam, we can cut out the four equal pieces to make our shaped up diorama. I thought about having it on a rocky floor, but I was like, I want to use my static grass and some of these chipped pieces of some balsa wood. I'm going to add in some inks and some water and make them properly dark reddish brown. I'm really happy with how these turned out and I thought they drew the extra empty space more attention towards the actual diorama cutting out all of the extra pieces and really shaping our battleground here we can start adding in all the extra pieces such as some rocks of which the gloom hands are gonna go onto and we can go ahead and put that aside and make our little dirt sort of paste which my phone then died so I didn't have that on video and it's just some dirt paste that you can go ahead and watch how I make it in my Charmander video link at the top of the screen over here and we are going to dry brush the ground really making the dirt look really really nice using some static grass so the static grass applicator basically it charges the grass so that when you stick it on it stands on end 
giving you this properly nice grassy look. So adding all the PVA glue wherever I needed it and we can go ahead and liberally apply this on. So after this we are going to move on to gluing everything on. So as I position the gloom hands over here we will then position our phantom ganon and it's crucial because we got to make sure that he's in the right spot for his dramatic entrance and maybe while he's there he'll critique my sculpting skills in passing. So with all the wood glued on and everything out of the way that's this creation finished and we're on to the reveal shots. And there you have it folks, the epic clash between our hero Link and the artistic Phantom Ganon with a touch of Gloomhands drama. It's like a Hyrulean soap opera, but with more clay and less gossip. So thank you guys so much for watching, make sure to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you guys next time.